Hey, it's Mark Podolsky at The Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Mark? I'm great. I'm great. We've got Taria putting in the reps, Harris. Taria, good to see you. How are, how are things in Atlanta? Things are well. How are How's you? How's the traffic in Atlanta these days? Um, I avoid it, but I think it's still pretty bad. It's getting back to normal. COVID, it died down some, but I think it's pretty much back to normal now. Yeah, I, I took my daughter awful. to school this morning <laughs> and there was no traffic. I'm like, this is one of the silver linings of COVID. Um, I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Tate, good to see you. Thanks. Yeah, happy to be here. And then we got Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com, learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. See, when we have fewer people, I can do a, a nice, warm introduction. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is that Scott Bossman is off the podcast permanently. That's what I'm hearing. No, not at all. We can have the warm, <laughs> warm readings again. No, what what you're hearing is, you know, the listener has always got to be on their toes. They have no idea. Should I skip the beginning? Should I fast forward? They don't know. We could get right into it. In fact, uh, Eric brought up uh, the latest, the newest format when we have Scott and Mike on is going to be the podcast in reverse, where we will be answering the question, but the listener won't know what the question is. And then they'll have to email in what they thought the question was based on our answers. Whoever emails in the correct question will get a prize. I like that. Something like that. Or we could obviously not frustrate the listeners and tell them at the end what the question was. Can't do it's, that. If you haven't seen Memento, it'd be like Memento. One of those early Christopher Nolan movies. Um, but... Before we lose the listeners, let's talk about today's topic, which is how do we know how many ads to put up or will always vary depending on the results we get or lack thereof for that matter? And because I've always been for years picking on Eric to go first, Tate, how many ads to put up? And then will it vary depending on the results we get or lack thereof for that matter? All right. Well, the answer is yes uh, to that question. No, the answer is <laughs> you need a lot of ads. Um, I guess there's some scaling topics that we could go into more detail on. But um, I always tell people if you are unsure of what to do in the land business, like if you sit down to work and you think, what do I do today? The answer should always be market. So how many ads should you put up? As many as you can get away with. And certain platforms are going to kind of prevent you from going wild or going nuts with the amount of ads that you could post. And your job as a land investor or somebody who is selling a, uh, uh, an item is to kind of toe that line. We constantly run into issues. And that's because we are figuring out what the limits are for posting ads. I want to know how many ads I can get away with without getting slapped on the wrist. And the only way to figure that out is trial and error. So when we have a certain type of property, we know exactly where to post it. We know what to say in the headline. We know how to price it. And that's because we've kept you know, our data and our metrics on all of this. But when it comes to how many ads, the answer is more than you think, and you can never have enough. More than you think, you can never have enough. Push the limits. Right. And... I like and, that. And, I like that. I mean, Mark, I was talking to a guy just this morning and um, we were looking at his uh, his metrics from his marketing. And the one thing that we took away was, wow, you've got an amazing amount of property. They're great parcels. They're in the right area. They're priced appropriately. Why aren't these selling? So we did a deep dive into where he's posting, how many views he's getting, those kind of things. And what we learned is it's a simple, the solution is very simple you simply need to double down on what you're doing. And I guarantee that if he does this, he's going to sell way more property in the coming two or three weeks than he ever thought possible. And it's all because he's pushing the boundaries of what is 
technically allowed or acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's interesting um, because, you know, it's, it's kind of beyond the scope of the question, but I, I'd, I'd perf- personally want to know in this current market, if I said to you, Tate, you can pick only one platform to market on and focus on that excluding the buyers list. Cause I know that's always, that is the platform excluding the buyers list. Where would you say you would market? I, you know, each one of the platforms that I work heavy, which would be like land moto Craigslist, Facebook, you know, some of the other listing websites, they all kind of serve a different purpose. So to just pick one is you're putting me in a pinch here mark this is uncomfortable territory right now all right let's pick pick three your top three it's easy it's easy i'm gonna go with uh i'm gonna go with uh my boy scott todd and land moto because i made some money off him last week so uh thank you scott i appreciate you selling my land it's always a pleasure uh when you're when you put your hard money into my pocket so i appreciate that uh i also would say facebook and then I like, I'm, I'm starting to play around on Craigslist again. And Craigslist has kind of been uh, this area that has always been good to me. But uh, recently it went through an overhaul and now I'm back on the Craigslist train. Okay. And when you say Facebook, do you say marketplace or groups? Uh, marketplace. Marketplace. Okay. Um, Taria, putting in the reps, Harris, how many ads do you put up or will it always depend on the results you get or lack thereof for that matter? Um, so Tate said all most of the great things that I thought I was going to say, but I remember going through flight school and Scott Todd, people, that was a, a common question. How many ads should I put up? How much, how much? And his whole thing is more than you think. And you that doesn't really ring true until you start actually doing the marketing. And you think you have enough ads out there, but... What helps us drive the amount of ads we want is the number of leads that we're actually generating. So if we notice we have tons of ads out there, but they're not generating enough leads, we will look at the ads and see, you know, exactly if there's something wrong with them. But then we also may just start plastering with more ads. Um, We try to get around some of the limitations on some of the platforms, Um, like some may limit you for this particular account. You can only post X amount of ads. So we try to get more accounts. So we try to get around the limitations of just one account by adding multiple accounts to the picture just so we can plaster with as many ads as we possibly can. Yeah, but Tria, how do you define define a good ad? How many leads... In your mind, would you determine, okay, this is a good ad or this this ad's not producing enough leads. I need to change the headline or maybe the pricing or something. A good ad for us is one that has helped us sell a property. So if that ad was posted and it could generate thousands of leads, but if we don't actually get to sell the property, um, we would consider that a decent ad. But a good ad for us is one that was posted. We got I don't know, whatever amount of leads we have to sell a property. I had to go back and look at our metrics for last month. But however many leads we need to sell a property, if that ad produced it and we sold the property, we'd say that was a great ad. Okay. And then back at you, the same question that I asked Tate, your top yeah. three marketing platforms right now. Our top three would be uh, Facebook Marketplace. Um, land moto and, uh, land flip and land flip. Okay. Mm-hmm. Look at land flip getting in, in on the action. I haven't heard that yeah. name in years. Yeah. Wow. That one, that one's those top, those three produce for us on a regular basis. Okay. And have you, have you been playing at all with Craigslist at all? So we backed off when it kind of tanked. And we kind of diverted our marketing dollars to other platforms. So we're not opposed to going back on Craigslist once, you know, we hear from the wonderful people who are on it that it's actually working again. So, so T, are you recommending it or are you still, are you still dabbling? You're not fully dabbling, making a recommend, I'm recommendation. Dabbling, let me see what Eric says. Cause I know he's playing around on there too. 
All right, Eric, what do you think? Same, well, same question to you. How many ads to put up? Okay. Okay. So we'll start from the beginning. I love the answer. Yeah. More ads than you think. Um, I think that's really important in marketing. Marketing is all about getting in front of people's eyes. Uh, in our case, since we're talking about digital mediums, right? Um, having them see your ad. So if we put two ads out, you know, what are our chances of people seeing those two ads? If we put 20 ads out, our chances are better. So the more ads we can put out, the better off we're going to be. I think that uh, we do have to take into consideration the platforms that we're on because as has been already mentioned, you know, I mean, certain platforms, it only makes sense to put one ad per property, right? If you're going to put a, an ad on Land Moto or Land Flip or one of the land selling websites, more or less, you're going to put one ad for that, that particular property. But on a place like Facebook or Craigslist or some other kind of classified um, ad website, you can put multiple ads for a single property. And that's how we're going to reach a bigger audience. Um, I think another important thing to keep in mind um, when we start talking about this, this idea of more ads than you think is you can't just take the same ad and plaster it everywhere. Okay. We're not, we're not achieving our, our highest potential that way. If, if we write a generic ad for a certain type of property and we broadcast across all the platforms, the same ad, you know, we're, we're limiting who we're reaching. So we start to think about our audience and targeting ads for each audience we want to reach. So if we want to talk to truck drivers, we should be writing ads that connect with truck drivers or ads that connect with people that, you know, want to do recreational activities on the property, like riding four wheelers or dirt bikes or something like that. So we think through these different audiences and, and that can come from what we learn in talking to leads. Um, we can begin to understand these different types of audiences and who they are and writing ads that speak to them and putting them on these platforms is where we're going to get the best reach um, and the widest reach to, to bring in those leads and convert to sales. I, I love that. That makes me think of one of Scott Todd's favorite websites, which is reddit.com. You can go on one of these subreddits and you can just, you know, eavesdrop on, on one of these passionate uh, subjects. Let's say it's, it's RVs. And you can really see how they're talking, the language that market is using and apply that to your ad. Now, you know, you can't be salesy or marketing on the actual Reddit because they'll, they'll knock, they'll kick you out. But you can certainly join the conversation if you have anything to, to add a value to it. But you can certainly then use that in, in your ads. So then, Eric, back to you, your, your top three marketing platforms. Um, you know, I think Facebook, you know, everybody's seen good results there. So, so that's up there in the top. Um, I'm also going to say Landflip. Uh, it's been extremely strong for us over the past probably 12 months. Um, so that's, it's a great place. And of course, Landmoto is also, um, another excellent place to be listing your properties. So those would be my top three, uh, kind of like Tate said, uh, we have begun to kind of dabble back in the Craigslist world. Um, results are, you know, we'll see where it all goes. Um, but we're starting to be able to get some ads to stick. Um, and we're seeing a little bit of success. But I would say at this point, it's too early, at least in my business, to, to know really where that's going to go. It used to be an excellent source of uh, leads and sales for us. But it definitely has kind of fallen back. And I'm hoping we can turn that around here in the coming months. All right. So, so you're going to dabble then? You're going to get back on based on Absolutely. Tate's recommendation? Yeah, we have been actually. So. Oh, you, oh, you have been. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Scott Todd, how many ads do you put up? Um, we, we put up quite a bit because we're also supporting Landmoto or supporting other things. I think that one of the mistakes that people make when it comes to ads is as has been said, you need a lot of ads, but really more than what you need than a lot of ads is you need a lot of eyes on those ads. 
Okay, so one of the mistakes that I, I think people make is, and, and I'm just going to use this as a hypothetical, I may not apply to you, but um, let, let's say that you are marketing land in, in Elko County, Nevada. Well, Elko has its own Craigslist, for example, and it has its own you know, Facebook marketplace. I mean, you can put Facebook marketplaces anywhere. The reality is, is there's like, I don't know, 20,000 people in Elko, Nevada, right? Like there's 20,000 people. It's not a lot of eyes. And you might say, well, it's close. Yeah, it's close to the land, but it's not a lot of eyes. So where do I want to go? I want to go to the big cities. I want to go to the top 60 cities in America. I want to go to Salt Lake City, for example, or Reno, or Vegas, or Sacramento, Modesto. I want to go where there's lots of people, lots of eyes searching for things because it's a numbers game. And so I don't necessarily always need uh, 150 ads a day going out. I mean, people used to think that way. I need 150 ads a day. That's not the reality. The reality is, is that you need more ads than what you think you need, but you also need more eyes on it. So now when you place these ads in these bigger cities, you have to think through some key things, your headline, and also that image that goes along with it. And if you really think about, if you're really getting, you know, deep into the woods here and you think about it, so everybody's listing their ads in these platforms, you have to stand out. What's going to stand out? The picture and the headline, those two things alone. And I see so many times people say, you know, one acre land in Elko. That's boring. Okay. Like that, there's nothing there. Okay, well, what if I'm looking for one and a half acre? You know, like I need to, I need to be able to get a chance to, to connect with somebody. And the headline and the picture do, do that. So, I have noticed even through Landmoto that people are are um, using or deliberately putting better thought behind their headlines, and they're also putting better thought between uh, about their pictures. There's a lot of VAs out there that will put, you know, um, 3D graphics on the image or on, you know, on the images, on the satellite maps. All of those things help and to tell the story. But that's really what you're doing is you're telling a story about the, the land, not to sell the land, but to get someone's attention so that they reach out to you. And one of the things that Taria said that I thought I thought was interesting, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but she defined a good ad as one that led to a sale. And I would say, look, if you have a thousand leads come in on one ad and you don't sell the property, that's not the ad. That's the salesperson. That's what I would say, because I would be like, I, I'm capturing the lead. I'm still winning. I'm winning because I got someone's email address. Now, it didn't mean, mean led to a sale. Maybe there was a disconnect between my marketing message of what I was putting out there and what people thought. That That is real. You know, like... And I've had that happen. I had a VA, they posted an ad, Mark, where they they said, you know, mobile home lot. And they posted it, the ad in Tampa, Florida. But guess what? The land wasn't anywhere near Tampa, Florida. The land was like in a completely different spot. So we had all these leads come in. But guess what I got? I got leads of people who want to buy land. So now is that a, a winner, winning ad? Depends on how you judge success. Is success by the sale or is it by the lead? I like the leads. I also like the sales, but leads turn into sales. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think it's really interesting. You know, if you're going to go on, well, first of all, you know, to give Scott Todd some props about Land Moto. Land Moto is a spite store because they they all the all the land sites jacked up their prices, and Scott's like, well, I can do this too. He makes no money on Land Moto. That being said. You know, it's like his charitable contribution to the Lanky community. But that being said, if you're, if you think, and I don't care what land platform it is, a land moto, if you're on land flip, lands of America, any of them, if you're getting the free account, you might as well have no account because it, it makes no sense. It's like saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to put a billboard up in rural Elko because it's free. And maybe someone will drive by and see it. And maybe I'll get a call. Versus I'll put a billboard up in Manhattan and millions of people will see it. Yeah, which one's the better investment? So marketing is an investment. You cannot penny pinch your way to wealth. It's one of my biggest pet peeves when people won't invest 
in their own success. And marketing is an investment. If you're looking at it as an expense, you're looking at it wrong. You've got the wrong mindset. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, those leads convert to sales. And if you're not getting enough eyeballs, you won't get enough leads. So don't, don't sell yourself short be out of, out of fear uh, or doubt. You know, if, if you bought the asset 25, 30 cents a dollar, you owe it to, <laughs> to the world and yourself. Get it out there and let people see it. The free counts, no one's going to see it. You, you're, no. you're just a needle in the haystack. I mean, Mark, there's a lot of there's a lot of value in what you just said there. And one of the things that I would also say is that um, it, it is amazing to me that one of the biggest complaints that I hear from people um, from from buyers, land buyers, is that they they'll say, well, I reached out to this person. They never contacted me back. And, you know, there are so many missed opportunities because maybe you didn't take them seriously, okay? Or this one seems too easy. I'm scared to sell it to them. Well, what do you have to sell? Like I've never once been scared to sell to somebody because the worst case scenario is I just get them, give them a refund and get them out of my life, which we just did. I, I gave someone a refund just to get them out of my life um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, just because I, I'm like, this guy's already a pain. I, can we have the relationship with Noel, please? So bless you. So, you know, Thank basically you. you can get them out of your life, but don't, don't judge people. Um, and I see that happening quite a bit is, oh, well, this guy seems too easy or too eager. I'm not going to re even respond to him, respond to everybody. I'm serious. Respond to everybody. And then, you know, don't, don't, um, it, it's, it, it's kind of eye opening to me too, is when you're thinking about advertising and you're, you're putting your property out there. You really do. You really have to stop and think about even the down payment and the message that sends. Um, you know, I, I was looking at a property the other day, and you know, some someone I see all the time. People they try to get you know ten percent of the purchase price down. And okay, it, if it's a lower if it's a lower transaction, that makes sense. But I'm looking at this property that was almost into six figures. They're trying to get ten percent down. That's not the market. Okay, like. I know you want it to be the market, but that's not the market. And so it's not always about getting that $4,000 down payment so that you can get your money back out of the land. That's very greedy and selfish. And the customers, they see it and they laugh it off and they are not ever going to respond to you. They, they, they are speaking. If you're not getting leads, it's oftentimes it's not the platform. What it is, is the market telling you, we don't like what you're putting out there. Yeah, that, that's that's really great advice. But back to you, Scott. Top three marketing platforms. Um, I never left Craigslist. I've been on Craigslist. Um, leads of leads. Um, the ads have have been slow. Like the you know, stick rate's been lower, but we never left it. We we stay. We've stayed true to it. So um, there, uh, land land moto, obviously, because I'm I'm driving traffic there. Um. I'd say those were the those are the two. I don't really do much with Facebook, and um, we we drive most of our traffic through the, those two platforms. Okay, okay. Well, I think this is a really great topic, but now we're at that point where before we ask Taria for her tip of the week, we need to talk about this week's sponsor. And if you've been following the podcast, this is going to be a big surprise. It's flight school. Learn how the next 16 weeks can transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. He's done it thousands of times. He will take you up that mountain quickly, safely, and efficiently. Plus, that flight school tuition ain't going to cost you nothing. You're going to make back that money guaranteed 180 days or less. Just show us your work. Schedule a call. Learn more. Go to landgate.com forward slash training, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Also, you get two free tickets to boot camp, which is um, which has already occurred. That was already last week. But if you're listening to it this week, get involved with flight school or the toolkit. You get two free tickets and you have two and a half days of land investing immersion also um, involved. 
So, and the next one's going to be in August live in Tate Litchfield's backyard. Lost wages. I mean, Las Vegas. So now we're at that point. Taria, what is your tip of the week? Um, well, I'm going to have to ask for help on my tip of the week this week. Um, I had one, but it turned out to be a dud. So, but I, but we like, we like the, the idea of it though. So explain the dud and then we'll all chime in on what, how we would solve this problem ourselves. Oh, okay. So my problem was getting spammy emails or just being on lists that I never subscribed to. So I was trying to find a good unsubscribe software that could go through and help me without having to, you know, unsubscribe individually with each one. And I found one and it worked well for like the first maybe three or four I was trying to unsubscribe. And after that, then the fees started adding up for each time I wanted to unsubscribe. So um, that was my dilemma. That was going to be my tip because at first it was like, this is great. Now I don't have to worry about all these unwanted emails, I can click, 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 and sit unsubscribe with one button. But I don't want to pay a ton of money for it. So, okay, uh, Eric Peterson, how would you solve this massive problem of email spam? Well, it's been a while since I've gone through that process, but last time I did, I believe I used a service called Unroll Dot Me. Um, and that allowed me to go through and unsubscribe from a bunch of stuff. I don't remember having to pay for it. Um, I don't know if that has changed, but um, maybe that one's worth checking out. You know, it's free. Why we don't charge you for this amazing service? So Look at go. that. There you go, Tria. It's free. Unsubscribe with one click. Un unroll me. Unroll mm -hmm. dot, unroll dot me. Combine your favorite subscriptions into one email. After you finish unsubscribing from unwanted emails, combine your favorite email subscriptions into a beautiful digest called the roll-up. Wow. It's, it, it's, of course, it's an iPhone app, but they even have it on Android. Look at that. Nice. Okay. I'm, I'm on Tate. it. Tate. Yeah, I use Unroll Me um, as well. Solid. That's exactly Solid. what you want. Um, Scott Todd and I, I think have a better, but all the more expensive I, service. I've used, I've used that one. I like it. And I no longer like the one that you're about to recommend. But You're I'll joking. All right. I'm going to recommend mine. I can't, I can't wait to hear why you don't like this. Mine is hey.com, H-E-Y.com. And they have a thing called the screener. So if you have a subscription that you don't want, you can screen them out and you'll never see it again. And in fact, you can subscribe to a million things and you can just, and you can even see what it is. And then you can, un, then you can just screen them out. You can screen them in, you can screen them out. There's all these other things. It's really simple is they have the inbox, the important box. They have the feed of all the marketing emails that you want to get. And then they have the thing called the paper trail, which is all your receipts. Super easy, super simple. It's 99 bucks a year. I think it's well worth it just because I love the way it looks. Um, it's, it's really been, I, it's really thought out to me. I cannot wait to hear the curmudgeonly Scott Todd <laughs> and what he would have to say <laughs> negative about hey.com. All right, Scott. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm a paid I paid my $99 for the year. I paid it and I started off loving it. I really did. But then I noticed the problem. The problem is, is that my emails have gone. Some of them go missing. I don't see them. Don't see them at all. I can't find them in the screener. I can't find them in the unscreener. I can't find them. I can't find, I can't find them. And then you will say to me, Hey, I sent you something. I'm like, didn't see it. And I don't know. Is it, is it been screened out somewhere? Is it not screened out somewhere? I can't find them. So some emails I get them and other emails, people are like, I emailed you. I didn't get anything. I don't know what happened. So 
It's now, if great they, job of hiding my emails. I'll tell you that. That's for sure. It, okay. I, I think this is a an edge case because I've not had that problem. And it's probably because you're not that technically advanced like I am. You probably just didn't set it up correctly with the forwarding from your Gmail account into Hey. And I can walk you through it, Scott, if you want. Screenshots and everything. Well, I did forward it over. And what, okay, as an example, as an example, Basecamp, for example. So when, when I get emails from Basecamp, sometimes they show up in my inbox and other times they're not there. And so then I, I don't know if they're in spam or where in the heck they are. And then I will go back and I'll see, oh, someone tagged me in Basecamp. Uh, I don't know, a month ago. Sorry, I didn't see that. Look, like, I, I mean, I didn't see it. It's not not there. And did you Did you talk to one. support about this? That's so weird because I don't have any. I get all the base camp emails. No. I mean, I get some. I don't get others. It's uh, sometimes they're together. Sometimes they're separate. Um, may, maybe it's a user error. I don't know. And I'm look. I'm I'm using using it on the. Use it on the iPhone. So it's not a Windows thing. You know, I, I don't know. I, I like it. But, man, I'll tell you what. You really want to screen out your emails? That's a great system to do it. You won't get any emails. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> scary. <laughs> okay, Jason Freed, if you're listening to this, who's also the, the, the owner of 37 Signals and Basecamp and the creator of Hey!, Please call Scott Todd or email him at his Hey email address. Yeah, don't and email help him me. Out. Hey, I'll never get it. Or, or yeah, at his, at his Gmail address, so at least he gets <laughs> it and sees it. Um, I have not had that experience, but I'd be curious. You know, email me if you've had a similar experience with Hey. I, I will. I'll, I won't keep recommending. And look, it. me. Look, I, I mean, I even thought for. I even thought. Okay, well, maybe I've done too. Been too aggressive with screening stuff, but. Um, I, I mean, here's a great example. I, I was waiting for an email to come in from a guy the other day. I'm in, in here looking for it right now. And nowhere, nowhere can I find an email from this one, one guy that I'm, I'm looking for. But when I go to my Gmail and I search his name, I find it. So even in the search of, hey, you can't find it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Because it, it'll even show you the screened out stuff, I think. Um, like I'm typing, I'm typing his name right now. It's not there, but it's in Gmail and the Gmail that's, is forwarded over here. Yeah. That's crazy. Something's up. I, I would, I would delete the app and reinstall it. Maybe, maybe that's, um, and see if that fixes it. Yeah. Eric, you have any other technical suggestions? Yeah. Did you try it on the Mac? Well, um, I, first of all, I don't use it on my desktop. I don't use the desktop version of it. I, I no, I do. Okay. I, I don't. And the iPhone. I just use it on my phone. And, um, when I tried to go set it up for desktop, it's act, asking, it's requiring two factor authentication. And look, I don't want to set that thing up. That's t- it. Takes two <laughs> seconds. You use Microsoft Authenticator. It takes three <laughs> seconds to do. Oh, that wow, might that wow. might solve all your problems. Every single time I want to check my email. No, no. It's only it's only once every ninety days they they do a two factor off. Listen, it sounds miserable. <laughs> Four times a year sounds miserable. <laughs> I mean, those, those you you won't get those twelve seconds back. I agree, but it's a small price to pay for security. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say something because then it will happen. But I'm just saying, like, he's not doing you know. it. He's just yeah. not doing it. I, but I look, should, you know, as, as a as an educated user, I should have the right to say no. My email, my required system. Like, if I want to be authenticated, great. If not, great. It's up to me, right? I, I, mean, I, I, I want to I, recline in a chair. I should be able to recline in the chair, right, Tate? Amen, brother. Amen. <laughs> oh man, I uh, I was actually traveling uh, this this weekend. Uh, first time I've traveled since COVID. The plane was packed, 
And sure enough, I'm not, I'm not even making this up. The person in front of me reclined. And I looked and I looked at them. I'm like, Tate? And it wasn't them. It wasn't you. Uh, that's funny. And she said, no, my name. She said, no, my name's Barbara. I said, Barbara, golden rule it. Golden rule it. I said, get out of my lap. Yeah. I traveled Barbara, last I weekend and I went to recline. To and I thought about you guys. I was like, wait, okay, I won't recline. But I'm a recliner typically. Don't. I mean, Mark, shouldn't you have shouldn't you flight. have um like I have a custom bitly thing, you know, uh bitly for link shortening. I have a custom domain with them for sure. Land Moto. And I think that you should have one like uh for the land geek, a short a shortened one with links to the podcast. And you, you could make one that says, you know, like uh the land geek forward slash don't recline and then you know, you just basically tell them, Hey, listen, listen to this podcast and just takes them right to the podcast. Like just don't recline. That's not a bad idea. Actually be, be a human and don't do it. Yeah. I mean, Tria, do you really want someone in your lap? I mean, a partial recline. I mean, no recline at all. No, a long no. flight. No, no, a no recline. Flight. We're not doing this again. You We're not how, doing this how, again. How, 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 <laughs> my space. See, you oh didn't pay for my gosh. space. That's the problem. Technically, it's <laughs> my space because my it's chair goes mine. back. Yeah. Exactly. Taria, I'm Eric. so glad you're on this podcast. I agree. <laughs> like, it's still my space. It, listen, if this was the Supreme Court of <laughs> reclining, you guys would be failed. It would this, yeah. would be, this case would be tossed out. It's three to two. You guys don't have stand a chance. Yeah, it's funny. I, I don't even know why the airlines allow you to do it. Because they don't care. It's not, it, There's nothing wrong with it. Right. It's like, you know, what they should worry about is, you know, people bringing oversized bags and trying to stuff them in the overhead. That's more of an issue than reclining. Talk about holding up a flight. The space you're sitting in. That, that's that uncomfortable. Listen, if you're on an airplane, you're going to be uncomfortable. Yes. All right, fine. Sa same worse thing for the person behind you, Eric. Sometimes you just got to have a little me is that, party. Is that just <laughs> the guy you are? Well, if everyone did it, it's all the same. If this person reclines, no, and this not. person, everything right. is the same. Your legs Ooh. don't move. No. Oh, okay, uh, here, Tate, Tate and Tria, I'm sitting next to you. Let's say it's a three-hour flight. I'm really tired. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I just put my head on your shoulder and sleep. No, that's no, actually, the, by the way, that's actually happened to me. I'm in your space. <laughs> First of all, I'm comfortable. It's going really, to be really uncomfortable. Is that it? okay? I, I'm going to be reclined. Physical your head's contact. just going to be dangling like this. <laughs> on on Tate's chest. I, I, yeah. Physical contact if I recline. I don't yeah. physically touch. It's no part of me, no part of my no, face. No, but yeah, touches. It's pretty close. <laughs> no way. I don't know. I, I'll yeah, tell you what. Yeah. Next time we all fly yeah, together, I'll be in the middle seat and I'll, and I'll just put my head on both of your shoulders <laughs> and just and snore loudly the entire time. You know, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. I don't know why you guys are making a big deal out of this. Some of us recline. Some of us don't. Some of us use Apple product. Others choose to use inferior products. That's okay. To each his own. To each his own. <laughs> I think I think we've got a podcast title now. To each his own. Each. I like it. All right. Well, I want to thank the listeners. And uh, the only way that we're going to be able to have this kind of witty banter back and forth is if you do us three favors. You got to follow us. You've got to uh, rate and review the podcast. Send a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to dub your money 30 days or less. Um, are we good? We're good. Hey, hey, Eric, three. We're good. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. One, two, three. Let's Let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. 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 Not bad. Not bad. Especially with the two recliners. They seemed more in sync this episode than in past episodes. Because we were in comfort mode. 
<laughs> there it is. <laughs> there, there it is. The, the compounding effect of the recline. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ask me, my, ask me how my flight was. Yeah. Good, I slept the whole way. Yeah. Tate's in his 50s. <laughs> Therese in her 70s. They look so young. That's why. The recline. Absolutely. Whatever. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. See ya. See ya. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttodd.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.